Welcome to class, everybody. My name is Ben Gromico. I'm from InterNACHI. Um, if you need to contact me, uh, feel free to visit our contact page, and that's at natchiorg slash contact. And actually, everybody on staff is on that contact page, too. And that's one of the major benefits of being an InterNACHI member. Um, you have about 30 people who can work on your business. So feel free to contact anybody on staff. We're there. What we're going to do is um, uh, perform a home inspection on this house. I inspected this home. I thought I'd go through how I perform a home inspection, uh, try to uh, take advantage of any, any information uh, from um, that process that I have of going through a home inspection. And along the way, we can talk about anything um, you want to talk about. Uh, make sure you reach out to your instructors and I'll be um, uh, at the office uh, during the five day class as well. Uh, I can't join you right now, but um, here are the topics. Um, we can go over how to perform an inspection. We can also talk about writing reports and we'll go over an inspection report um, from this uh, home inspection that I performed. There's business strategies. We can talk about scheduling and time management and hiring inspectors, branding and marketing. We have a member marketing team right here at InterNACHI headquarters, so feel free to reach out to them and talk to them. Uh, Director of Marketing, Jessica, and all these other things. So anything you want to talk about, make sure you reach out to somebody while you're here in class at the InterNACHI House of Horrors during the five-day Become a Certified Home Inspector class and um, get your needs met. InterNACHI School is accredited as um, a university. So everything we do um, is accredited, including our home inspector exam, our home inspector courses, home inspector certificate program. So your certification, if anybody asks you, are you certified? Are you a certified home inspector? Yes, because you actually went to a university. So if you wanted to check, you can go to um, internachi.edu or check the government website at ed.gov slash accreditation and type in your favorite school um, or organization and InterNACHI will pop right up. So um, some uncomfortable things. Um, we expect really good behavior from all of our students. You must be professional, behave in a manner that's consistent with our educational goals. Please treat staff and um, fellow students respectfully. We don't tolerate sexual harassment, racist or offensive remarks or disruptive behavior. Uh, we may require any student to leave the premises at any time without warning if we determine that this is appropriate. And if you don't want to leave, well, uh, we take another measure. So uh, I'm sure it'll be just a fun class. First thing I want to show you is um, the benefit of, well, somebody will come by and actually show you how to log into your account and um, access all of the membership benefits. Because when you become a member of InterNACHI, you get an online account, and that's the portal through which you access everything. So log into your account, and in, um, let me log into mine. I'll show you what it looks like. It's really important to go here for information. So you get it at the top corner, and you log in. Mine looks slightly different. And then at the top here, it says InterNACHI CPI certification. That stands for Certified Professional Inspector. And you want to take a look at that. Or if you are um, in a regulated state or province, you want to click this button as well. So those are pretty big buttons right at the top of your dashboard when you log in. And those are really important. So you want to take a look at the certification process because there is an accredited program, accredited by the US Department of Education in Canada, um, to become a certified home inspector. And you want to um, get that certification correct, OK? Performing an inspection is pretty straightforward, actually. It's the most fun thing out of running a home inspection business is actually performing an inspection. What's really challenging is the business and marketing side of everything, the accounting. And how do you get the phone to ring? Well, fortunately, because you're a member of Internet, we have resources for you. A lot of free online resources. Um, I'm going to show you some of them. But also, we have staff to help you as well. One of the resources that I recommend is Nachi TV, N-A-C-H-I dot TV. So uh, I know you have notebooks and pens, so get your notebook out and maybe um, 
uh, write down some URLs or you can email me later and ask for that information. But um, at Natchi TV, we have free online webinars for home inspectors. So you go to Natchi TV and um, if you can't make a, they are live, um, interactive, you can ask questions and talk. Um, but if you can't make it to class, you can just register and I'll send you a link to the video recording of the webinar so you won't miss anything. You can watch it later. So um, if you click right now, the register for free button, we have a large schedule coming up of webinars, live webinars with um, vendors from across the industry and some inspection training uh, webinars. But if you go to the tab called marketing, I really like this information here. Check out some of the top row videos here, like seven tips to destroy the commodity of home inspections. Um, ask, assess where you are and set goals and make a plan to be successful. Uh, marketing tips for home inspectors, and I really like this one. It's the business and marketing tips for home inspectors class. It's about a two hour video. Take notes. Um, it's really good. It's really good. So. These videos, um, here's another one, top 25 marketing tips and products and services for home inspectors. These videos are here for you because we can't just fit everything into the five day class. So you're going to have to access other resources, other sources of information in order to gain the knowledge that you need, the resources that you need to um, um, put systems in place so that you're gonna be successful in your business. And that's at nachi.tv, N-A-C-H-I dot TV. While you're driving around, going from one home inspection to another, uh, get smarter by listening to the Home Inspector podcast. And that's at nachi.org slash podcast, N-A-C-H-I dot O-R-G slash podcast. And there we talk about everything you need to do, everything related to home inspections and business and marketing tips. I refer a lot of people, especially new members and new inspectors, um, to this page. It's a step-by-step -step checklist for success, natchiorg slash everything. And there you'll find 15 steps. Let's open it up. 15 step checklist for success. The first step is to join InterNACHI. If you are here uh, in class at the five day class, you have joined InterNACHI, you have a membership. Um, step two is to get trained and certified, and by the end of the five-day class here at the, at the Internet Chief House of Horrors, you will be a certified home inspector. Step three is you log into your members-only account. That's that portal through which you can access everything. Step four is we have a free online business course designed for home inspectors. It even goes through um, like some of the legal stuff, legal foundations, how to incorporate. It goes over the uh, choosing the right name, um, even the right domain name for your business website, and then even hiring inspectors. So it's a really good business course. And then we talk about branding and marketing, your website, you gotta have a website, take advantage of membership benefits, and then step eight is a really good one, boost your business with all these great ideas, products, and services. Get advanced training, you don't have to worry about that right now, just get certified. We have inspection tools, especially from Inspector Outlet, which is the shop under our roof here at InterNACHI headquarters. So go right around the corner and talk to uh, the good folks at Inspector Outlet. And um, basically the tools that you need are um, a really good high lumens LED flashlight, a GFCI tester, a voltage leak detector, and then uh, maybe some personal protection equipment like gloves, a respirator, goggles, safety glasses. Um, the, the investment, the cost of investing into this business is very low. So um, get some good tools and Inspector Outlet is where you go. Step 11 is about um, report writing and software. Step 12 is how to take care of your clients. You don't just wanna get paid after the inspection and wash your hands of your clients. They're your neighbors. You wanna keep in contact with your past clients. They're like gold. Um, they are your unpaid ambassadors of your business. So um, keep in contact with them. And then keeping up on what's new in the industry, you want to subscribe to the Internet G YouTube channel. You want to like some stuff and follow the follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. And um, you also want to subscribe to the Internet G newsletters. We have two monthly newsletters to keep 
um, keep on top of what's new and available for Internet G members. So be sure to subscribe, especially to the YouTube channel and to the monthly newsletter. All right, let's go back. And so that's at natchee.org slash everything. Um, I recommend going to Inspector Coach. Um, I know the coach and you don't have to buy her services. Um, she coaches home inspectors on being successful, a one-on-one -on -one custom um, coaching. And go to her downloads tab and download the free eight-step checklist. It's free. Um, there's also, uh, I think she has some tips for marketing to real estate agents and other things. Um, and she also has a store as well if you're looking for stuff on Amazon and you can't find it. And that's at inspectorcoach.com. Okay, let's inspect this house. Here is my actual, um, I was a home inspector for a dozen years in Pennsylvania, near Philadelphia suburbs, and um, this is my daily schedule. And I show you this because you have to figure out what your daily schedule is. Maybe it's just one job a day. I did two jobs a day. And I started off doing one job a day, and then business got great, and then we went to two jobs, and we tried to do three jobs a day, and that wasn't working out very well. Two jobs a day work great. So I leave early at seven o'clock and I'm home before five and I'm done. I don't work at night because I inspect and write inspection reports as I inspect. And I simply click a button at the end of the inspection and uh, my report is done. And I'll show you how I do that. So at seven o'clock I leave my house because I want to arrive to job one early. And when I arrive, well, I have permission already. We sent out emails. We got confirmations. We have access to the property. But um, I like to get there early because I'm never late. And while I'm there, I might as well start inspecting. So you could do the exterior. It's really up to you what you do first, second, third. I like to do the most difficult things first and get them out of the way. And so I do the roof. And you're not required to walk upon any roof surface, but that was part of my brand. And we'll talk about that. So I went up on a roof, I inspected the roof, came down, and hopefully my client arrives about then. Big smile, great first impression, um, hand out business cards. I talk about my observations of the roof. I tell them how this is all going to work in the next couple hours. And um, they can f I invite them to follow me around and ask questions. So in the beginning, it's difficult to learn this skill, but you have to inspect, talk, and write a report all at the same time. And um, it takes a, a while to do that uh, well. Well, anyways, um, at eight o'clock, my client arrives. I inspect the exterior. If they wanna go around with me, that's great, but the exterior is only 15 minutes or so. And then I wanna get to the heavy lifting, I call it, the, the difficult systems, the HVAC, the hot water source, the water supply, the drain, and the plumbing. And then I move to the electrical, which is, um, could be hazardous, right? Um, and then the structure, which is really important. When I get to the attic, I'm two hours in and I wanna finish up in about another hour. And I'll be done at 11 o'clock. I wanna have my lunch, drive to the next job, listen to the Internet G Home Inspector podcast and um, get to my next job early. And it starts at 12, three hours later, I'm done. I wanna come home before five. And I did that for a dozen years. And I made a lot of money, really a stacks of cash. And that's why you're here, right? Um, if, you're in, if you want a good job, if you want to make a good living, you get a good job. If you want to make a fantastic, great living, you start your own business. And like a home inspection business, it's, it's really fun. It's a lot of fun. And there's the potential to make a lot. It's a really great way to make a great living. You can make a lot of money, do good in the world, go pay your bills, uh, take vacation and things like that. Um, so that's a great opportunity. I'm really excited for you to be here and take advantage of all the resources that InterNACHI provides to members. Okay, so you take this, my schedule, and figure out how your schedule looks. And it's all about time management. This is really important. This isn't just like, oh, this is what I do. This is how I manage my time. Because in business, what you want to do is think about a general uh, equation um, where you make your money on the top of the, uh, of the 
it's dividing your money to buy by your time. So on the top of the numerator is the numerator is all your gross revenue. You want to make as much money as possible with home inspections and ancillary inspections. So that's why I'm making three hundred and ninety-six dollars plus ancillary inspection revenue. So I want to build up a lot of revenue and divide it by time. I don't want my time to be long. I want my time to be efficient and short. You make more money when you have a, a big numerator divided by a small denominator. A lot of money divided by a small amount of time. If it's flipped, you're doing something wrong with your time. If you're, if you're working at night for three hours, you're at the bottom of the fraction is wrong, right? It's too big. So think of heavy top, a lot of money divided by an efficient small amount of time. So you need to manage your time well. You have to put systems in place so that you can um, gain, um, earn a lot of gross revenue and divide it by uh, a small amount of time by being efficient. And one of the best ways to be efficient with your time is to go mobile with your um, reporting software. And to increase revenue, you need to be certified not just as a home inspector, but in ancillary services or other additional inspector certifications. And InterNACHI has over 45 additional types of certifications, and they're all nationally accredited programs. <laughs> More than 45 inspector certifications. Step one, you get your membership, you join InterNACHI, and step two, you get certified. And there's the CPI certification. That's the main home inspector certification, but we have all of these other certifications. So we get trained and certified in other types of inspection services. Why? Because you, most people don't know what they need. They don't know that they should get a mold test. Or in this area, there are high levels of radon. Like in Colorado, you're now at Internet G headquarters in Colorado. One out of two homes have elevated levels of radon. And radon is the second leading cause in lung cancer. And the EPA says to test frequently, regularly, especially if you're going to renovate, like something done in the basement, which a lot of your clients, home buying clients, are going to do. They're going to move in and do some stuff down in the basement maybe, right? Well, it's up to you to get trained and certified. And all those certifications are free and online to members. So go back to that URL, natchi.org slash certification, so that when you're here at 1101 after your first job, that 396 was my base price for my home inspection, standard home inspection, and then I added ancillary inspections in order to increase my gross revenue. If you can add revenue without adding time, that's profit. That's really good. If I went to a home inspection and I only did a home inspection, well, ugh, I'm disappointed in myself. Disappointed in that we didn't package something for my client. People love to buy packages, bundles of services and products. So think about that. Think about being trained and certified and offering a lot of things and then having like a nice package, maybe um, uh, a gold package, a platinum package, or, or a basic and standard, advanced, or something like that, comprehensive, um, something like that. So I inspect the roof. You're not required to walk upon any roof surface according to the standards of practice, and standards of practice is at natchi.org SOP. So take a look at that. Use the SOP to your advantage. It helps reduce liability to know what you're supposed to inspect and not required to inspect. So use it as a good foundation upon which you build a really good inspection process. You'll see that most clients of yours will actually ask you information that will require you to exceed the standards of practice. And there are many things that you do that are just going to have you exceed the standards of practice, and that's okay. We have an article written by legal counsel um, that says um, um, how to uh, properly exceed the standards of practice if you if you do so i did all the time and that was part of my brand so i try to get up on the roof i carry tall ladders on a truck and i try to get up there again you don't have to but if you and i were in the same market and we were competing with each other 
you have to figure out how you're going to um, beat that picture. Because this picture is going to be in my marketing, it's going to be on my website, it's going to be in my inspection report, which is going to get passed around and read by potential clients and the seller who's a potential client. This is part of my brand. I get up on the roof. If you don't, and we're competing, we're friendly competitors, and we see each other at the local chapter meeting every month, we could talk about you know how you inspected the roof without getting on it, and now I'll talk about how I got up on the roof and almost slid off and all that stuff, right? And you have to... Um, the the goal in marketing is to show incredible amount of value for the cost. And in, in business, the general rule is if the perceived value is much greater than the cost, it's a good decision. So this is my way of marketing my brand, which is why you would hire me. My brand is the answer to the question, why should I hire you instead of somebody else? Why should I hire Big Ben Inspections instead of um, another inspector? One of them would be the value I provide um, includes getting up on the roof. Okay. So think about value, perceived value in relation to the cost. You want to overwhelm your clients with value, with quality service, that's a great shot. I like that shot. The gutter is clean. So what, when I get up on the roof, I'm inspecting every surface, every plane, every field. I'm looking at flashing. I may look at where the roof butts up against a skylight or a chimney stack or a wall or something. I'm looking for step flashing and counter flashing and things like that. And here I'm looking for anything damaged, cracked, missing, exposed roofing nails. We have a lot of roofing training resources, a lot of online courses um, and articles. And then I come down. I also do videos as well. So this is a video, I believe. The asphalting and roof appears to be in good shape. Yep. And there's vent. The roofs come with new flashing. New flashing. And there's a chimney stack. Chimney stack appears to be in good shape. No major rust or corrosion. Exterior vinyl looks good. Um... And before I step on my ladder to get down, I'm already done inspecting the roof, taking pictures, taking video, and I'm done also writing the inspection report for that system because I use a mobile device. So if you have a mobile device, um, you can use a tablet or, a, or a, anything, um, iPad or a, um, a phone, a droid, get software, that you can use um, without being on Wi-Fi. I think um, most of them, all of them do that. And um, you can do your inspection and you can simply follow a checklist and check the things that you are required to check and take pictures and write your report. And at the end of the system, you're done with that system. So we're going to go to the next system, with it, which is the exterior. And we're going to inspect that in about 15 minutes. The roof was about 15. The exterior is about 15. And then we're going to go inside and do those big systems, right? And after every system, I um, ask my client for just a moment. And I'm going to write my report and then click and go to the next system. So at the end of the inspection, I'm really efficient with my time. I ask my client, would you like a summary of the report? And I click a button and it sends them a link to the summary of the report. And then I ask just for a few more minutes and I make sure that the entire report is done with the pictures where I want them. I may add some pictures and videos and then the entire report is available. If they want to print it out, I'll bring in my printer. But usually clients just want to know what the problems are. What are the defects? And the agent wants the summary as well because they want to start negotiating on the report uh, findings, the summary. And what I did, and this is not a requirement, it's really up to you. Um, I called every problem a, a defect, but I distinguished different types of defects. So if it's a problem, I call it a defect. I don't call it um, something serviceable. I don't know what that means. No one really does. Um, I don't use a, a table where it says NPNIX or something like that, like 
present, not present, inspected, not. Pre- I don't. I don't understand that either. If it's a problem, I call it a defect, and there are degrees to the defect. There's there's um, distinguishing characteristics, or you know, there's differences in defects. One of them is cosmetic, which is a a flaw, uh, a blemish, something superficial. It really isn't required at all to be in the report. I may take a a picture of a stain or a bump in the drywall for my client who um, wants it in a report, but it's not really anything that I pay attention to. Minor defects are like a dirty air filter, something that the homeowner can do themselves. A major defect is like a hole in the roof. We need to hire a roofer. Um, and a material defect is actually defined in the standards of practice, and that's the major one. Um, that's the one you have to report if you both observe it and deemed it to be material. Material can hurt somebody. It's really serious. So material defect is actually the only def- defect that is mentioned in the standards of practice. There are other things that need um, reported as in need of correction, like missing GFCIs and smoke detectors and space between spindles. But the defect, um, the material defect is the one that's listed and described and required in the standards of practice. So are you required to find all the problems in a house? No, you're not required to find everything that's wrong in a house. Um, It's impossible. And when you realize that, then your home inspection service actually becomes a lot of fun because I'm only required to report upon things that I both observe and deem to be material in nature. Huh. So what is material? What is a material defect? Well, it's a serious defect. There's a there's something that distinguishes it from all the other types of defects. And it's its definition is in the standards of practice. Okay, so you're not required to report upon all the defects. You're not required to find all the defects. And you're only required to report upon the defects that you both observe and deem to be really, really bad. Okay, 8 o'clock, I'm done with the roof inspection. I'm also done writing that part of the report. You should write your inspection report as you inspect if you want to manage your time well. A lot of money divided by a little bit of time. Let's inspect the exterior. So I'm inspecting the exterior. There's some torn screens. I walk around and I take a look at the siding and looking for wood rot at the bottom of the doors, corners. It's very easy. Water should be managed well. Everything should be sloped away. I bump into other systems like the electrical system here. This is the electrical meter on the outside of the house. And there's a line going into the 200 amp line going into the electrical panel, probably in the basement. Grounding wire, grounding rod, there's a water faucet. The ground around the house is sloped away and the downspouts are discharging away from the house. That's good. Um, this isn't a major structural problem. It's just a, it's actually a, a cosmetic. Um, the, the pour was kind of funny right there in the concrete. Um, that hose bib should be frost free in cold weather climates. Um, the, the hose bib should be a frost free hose, hose bib so it doesn't freeze and burst. And there's the deck. The space between the spindles is too far apart. It's large enough for a child to fall through or at least get his or her head stuck in there. We don't want that. Um, code, modern standards, building practices, best practices. We want a tighter space. We don't want a sphere of four inches in diameter to be able to pass through the spindles of a rail. It's um, in the standards of practice as a um, something you need to report as a need of correction. Some uh, deck railing cracking, eh, it's okay. That's an exterior vent. Um, it's actually the dryer termination and it's louvered and it's plastic and I can see that it's filled with lint and it's actually busting through. It's all clogged up. So that's a fire hazard. So I want to make sure that the seller actually knows that there's a fire hazard in the house. So I feel it's like my duty to also inform the seller when I find things like fire hazards or electrical hazards, safety hazards. I'm not going to disclose something confidential, but if there's something like a fire hazard, I feel I have a duty as a home inspector to inform the current homeowner. And it's usually okay. I asked permission, but um, from my client to disclose that. 
Um, exterior steps. We're not code inspectors, right? So I want to make sure that there's a handrail with these exterior steps, and there are. And I know that because I've been trained by InterNACHI um, online through our online courses that are accredited. And InterNACHI courses are based upon the International Residential Code, the IRC, the most recent version of it. And handrails, the code says in section R31178, that handrails are required for stairs with four or more risers. So if you have three risers, you don't need a handrail, according to code. But guess what? I'm not a code inspector. So if I feel, as a certified home inspector, that my client needs a handrail and there's only three risers, and you want to put that in the inspection report, feel free. You're not a code inspector. Code inspectors, oh, they have books like this that they have to memorize and quotes. We do not, as home inspectors, quote code, and we do not have to um, refer to code as part of our report. We may, we're basically writing our opinion. So this is a picture of a previous inspection that I did on a much older home. And there's how many risers? One, two, three risers. I recommended a handrail for my client. I can imagine an old woman, you know, needing help and assistance from a handrail to get up those steps into her house. That's why I imagine. And so I put that in my inspection report. And if someone wants to argue about code, tell them you're not a code inspector, right? And if you feel that that's a safety hazard, put it in the report. Don't pull any punches. So if you think it's a defect, write it as a defect. You're not a code inspector. Um, so I put that as a report. Now the reality of the situation is they may never fix that. They may never, the seller is probably not going to do it. I'm assuming they could negotiate it away. Remember your home inspection report is just supplementary to the, so the seller's disclosure. Um, everything in the inspection report is negotiable. You don't have to fix anything. Um, you're not a, the township code inspector. You can't enforce anything, anybody to do anything. It's really just suggestions, recommendations. This is what you think. So um, the reality is a lot of things in our inspection report are going to be negotiated away, maybe for a reduced price, or have it fixed, or it becomes a checklist of things to do. Go to Home Depot and get these things and fix your house once you move in. Um, so knowing that, that should free you up into writing recommendations without having to worry about killing the deal. There's hardly anything you could do to kill a deal. If the deal goes south in a real estate transaction, it's probably because the home owner wasn't quite right for the home. Because if you think about it, there's hardly anything a home inspector can say that can kill the deal. Your client, a home buyer, has spent months trying to find this dream home that you're now inspecting. They have gone online and found the right real estate agent and have driven around for months looking at houses. They've been to many open houses. They've gone through houses. They found the right house. They found the right neighborhood. They found the right school district. They found the right real estate agent. They found the right bank. They found the right appraisal. They got a pre approved for this loan. They signed a contract. They put an offer down. It was accepted. Now they have to find the right home inspector and they find it because um, you're using InterNACHI's marketing team to help you get out there and promote your services and you're there at the very last at the very end at the tail end of all of this they found their dream home all they want to know really is are there any material defects so feel free to make recommendations this one i made a recommendation because the stairs are slanted you can't have slanted stairs another system component um, this is the um, outdoor compressor unit condenser and I take a picture of the manufacturing label all the time. And the refrigerant line and the disconnect are there. The fins are kind of damaged. No big deal. The unit is old. So I'll make sure it kicks on. Back to the exterior, looking for any problems. The driveway looks great, recently sealed. There's my money shot, there's my 
van with my ladders. And I never park in the driveway. I always park out of the driveway, somewhere on the sidewalk or something. Allow, allow your clients to use the driveway to pull in. You don't have to park in the driveway. So there's a screened in porch. All exterior receptacles are GFCI protected. Now I'm done with the exterior. I'm done writing the report. I go inside. I ask my client to follow me around. I want them with me and ask questions. I don't want to follow up in the evening with phone calls and email exchanges and text messages messages about my report findings. So I want to just handle everything. So I invite my clients to inspect the HVAC system. I'm going to show my client where everything is, how it works, how to maintain it. HVAC, it's actually a heat pump unit, no fuel. That's great. Refrigerant lines, manufacturing label, the duct. Everything's sealed up, but I pull the front cover off and take a look at the A coil um, just to see what the fins look like. It looks okay. The condensate drains into a pump and hopefully discharges outside. <laughs> the air filter is clean. That was nice of them to do that just before I arrived. There's a condensate pump there. It's plugged in. Humidifier. Um, in cold climates, we like to humidify the cold, dry air. In the wintertime, it has the line going to the unit. And it has been cleaned and serviced in over a year. So that's a default uh, recommendation. I look for the most recent service record. If it isn't within the past 12 months, that's a recommendation. Even if everything works really well and everything heats up and cools and is working really well and no defects, I make a recommendation for it to be clean and serviced. There's an electric baseboard heater that turned on. That's nice. Hot water source is the next big thing, right? Here's the electric hot water tank. No leaks. It's relatively new. I take a picture of the manufacturing label. Cold water coming in, shut off valve. There's a, a line going to the refrigerator or the humidifier. Um, TPR discharge um, has to discharge to the to the floor. But there are actually 14 requirements. I think it's 14, 12 or 14 requirements to the discharge piping. And how are you going to remember all that? You don't have to. But one of them is um, it has to discharge in the same area as the hot water source. It can't discharge through a wall and outside or into our garage, right? It has to discharge. It has to be conspicuous. If it's leaking, you want to see the leak from the TPR valve because there's a pressure problem. So it also has to discharge near the floor. Um, it can't discharge going up. It has to discharge at a slope going down. All these things. How am I supposed to remember that? Uh, I put a little cheat sheet in my mobile device software so that I look really smart because I don't have to remember the, the code 504.6 requirements for discharge piping. It's right here. So having a mobile device helps you not only be efficient with your time, but also you look really smart and you uh, reduce your liability. You reduce the chances of you making a mistake by forgetting what to inspect. Okay. Remember, you're not a code inspector either, but you can use code to um, make your inspection process very thorough. Water supply, there's the cold water coming in through a shutoff valve, pressure regu regulator, check valve, water meter, a jumper, and another valve. Nice. So the hot water tank was probably a couple minutes of inspecting. It's, it doesn't take me an hour to inspect an electric hot water tank. The water supply coming in, you're required to uh, inspect it and identify where it's located. Um, that's only a couple minutes. So it's really fairly quick once you get the hang of it. And how do you get the hang of performing an inspection? You perform an inspection on your house 10 times at least. And you'll see a huge difference between your first inspection on your house and your 10th. You're right now next to a house of a thousand defects. The Internet House of Horrors is an entire house built under our roof, has a bunch of defects in it, and we actually have a cheat sheet. We have the answer sheet. We, we have identified and described all the defects for you. So you go through the House of Horrors, you inspect a, a one system, maybe the garage, try to find all the defects in the garage, and then go to the answer sheet and actually find all the defects there. Test yourself while you're here. Perform four inspections. That's part of the certification process. You have to write four mock or pretend inspection reports and submit them. Do them here. Um, 9.15 to 10, I'm inspecting the electrical panel and the structure. Only two things, and it takes 
a little bit longer because the electrical panel, I just want to go nice and slow and the structure I want to be very thorough. So here's the electrical panel, 200 amps, there's the main disconnect. You're not required to remove the dead front cover. I have some breakers that are in the off position. I want to take a picture of that before I remove the dead front because I exceed the standards of practice. Every breaker needs to be specifically identified. Inside, it looks good. I'm looking for basically a big fat breaker on a thin small gauge wire, like a 20 amp breaker on a 14 gauge wire. And those breakers that were in the off position, there aren't any, um, any wires connected to them, so that's good. And I have two defects inside the electrical panel, and those will be in the report and the summary. Structure. I just take a look around and I look at everything that I can. And while I'm inspecting, I'm taking pictures, I'm snapping pictures. They're free. Just keep snapping, snapping, snapping. And on an iPhone, um, there's to take a picture, it's, it's actually really easy. Um, it's my thumb right here. So I'm going to snap away. Let's see if, I can, if you can hear me. Oh. oh, how did I get my sound up on my snaps? Oh, well. So I'm just snapping with my thumb like that. And that's easy. And then I go into my uh, software and I make comments. Um, right now, I've learned Home Gauge, I've learned Home Inspector Pro, I'm learning Spectora. Um, we just had 3D inspection software on Natchi TV. Um, so there are many pieces of software out there. Um, th th all of them, I think, have free trial periods or downloads and, and um, give them a try. Give them a try. Uh, let's see. So I'm looking for, um, I'm looking in the nooks and crannies and anywhere where something of a certain material meets another different material. So where this steel I-beam meets the concrete, I'm taking a look at that. I can't see everything. Um, there are a lot of inspections and limitations to a home inspection. A visual only inspection is what a home inspection is. It's like putting both hands behind your back and just looking around. You don't have to touch anything or move anything. Um, not, not required to remove any ceiling panels like I'm doing now, exceeding the standards of practice. You're not required to move insulation like I do. And that's a moisture meter. I actually have it here. Um, it's a probe, and um, it's called a hydro shark. And it gives me a signal when something's wet. And it's about um, 30 inches long. And I use it to do the carpeting. So, you know, I just probe through the carpeting and into the padding. And if there's something wet here, it'll give me a, um, a, a visual and an audio, audible signal. I also have this other tool. Um, it's a, actually a gardening tool. It's a three tine hoe. It's extendable and has three tines. And I heat up one and straighten it so that I can um, poke things. And the hooks I use to hook insulation and put the insulation back. So this is a three tine hoe. You can get that anywhere at Home Depot or something. Inspector Coach, um, that URL, Inspector Coach sells these. Um, and ship through Amazon if you're interested. Um, there's inspectorcoach.com. Take a look at the smoke detectors. If there's an absent, um, if there are any um, smoke detectors that are not installed that should be installed, um, any detectors that are yellow, um, any detectors that don't have battery backup, um, these are all defects I put in the inspection report. And then I love pictures like this because it shows the, the limitations and restrictions at the time of the inspection. Let's say that there's a defect, a hole in the foundation wall, and it just pours water every time it rains. Well, that's why I mark the weather conditions for every home inspection on the first page of my inspection report. Um, if it's not raining, and if there isn't water coming in, and I don't see it, I can't report upon it. So I, you can't report upon any defect that you can't see. So if there's a defect behind all this stuff, right, I want a picture that shows your honor the inspection restrictions at the time of the inspection were numerous. I couldn't see the defect, right? And if somebody calls you up later on and says, hey, you inspected my house two months ago and uh, we have a hole in the foundation. One of the things that I did, you don't have to, um, to help um, resolve issues like that 
I recommended, um, I invited myself to come back and reinspect. And when I come to the house, and if there's a hole in the foundation, right? I go, wow, you know, look at that hole. It's huge, it's massive hole in the foundation. Look at that big defect that I could see from 10 feet away. Amazing, wow. I didn't see that during the inspection. Did anybody see that? No, it must've been covered up, right? Let's, let's look at the photos. I take a picture of all of the restrictions in a house. I mean, if, if it's obvious now, and it wasn't obvious then, you're not required to um, report upon defects that are revealed after your home inspection, that are revealed by cleaning up, simply moving the stove. You don't know what's behind the appliance or the furniture or under the rug or above the drop ceiling or behind the insulation. It's a visual only inspection. You put two hands behind your back and look around. That's it. So um, when you see a defect and you deem it to be material, put it in the report. If you can't see a defect, there could be a defect right now above my head. If I don't see it, I'm not required to report upon it. I'm not responsible for it. And I'm certainly not responsible for future events. If the, if the basement floods during the next rainstorm, there's no way a home inspector is required to accept that responsibility. It's not a projection of future events or conditions. The heating system could be working during the inspection and the next day could fail. The dishwasher, I always run the dishwasher at the end of the inspection. If the dishwasher leaks at the time of the inspection, that's fantastic. If a defect um, is discovered by you, if your, hand, if your screwdriver goes through rotten wood, <laughs> through a floor joist, that's fantastic. You know what I do when my screwdriver gets stuck in wood rot? I leave it there and I take a picture of it. Um, if the toilet leaks on the floor, that's great. Take a picture of it. If the dishwasher leaks on the floor, that's fantastic. Take a picture of it and put it in the report as a defect. You are supposed to essentially break things, find things that are broken that no one else can see. All right, so I'm done with the big systems, right? We finished up with the electrical um, and the structure. It's very difficult to inspect the structure with all the inspection restrictions. I'm in the attic. And when I get to the attic, I'm only in there for a few minutes because most attics are like this. There's no flooring. It's very dangerous. So I'm not moving beyond the access panel. I'm going to take a look around and see if I can see anything. But I'm going to approximate the depth of the insulation, look for structural problems, active roof leaks. If I don't see any active roof leaks, nothing to report upon. I'm done there. I'm down at the laundry. Now I'm on the interior. I have interior, garage, and, and um, the kitchen to do. And I'm pretty excited because I'm on time. I'm always keeping, uh, oh, the dryer vent, remember? It's blocked, so that's a fire hazard. Nice short run, no, no kinks in the pipe, but it is clogged outside. Pressure tested hoses, that's good. GFCI protection is needed in laundry. And there's a water catch pan, so that's good. Now I'm inspecting the interior, which includes the bathrooms, and I'm gonna flush the toilets. I'm not crazy about um, S-traps. I'll put them in the report, but I'm not gonna jump up and down about them. I'm looking for, um, I do the same thing in a bathroom, basically. I flush the toilet, I run hot and cold water at the sink, I turn on the tub, hot and cold water, turn on the shower, and everything is running and flushing and filling up the tank, and, I'm looking for water problems and I'm looking for functional flow out of the shower when I have everything running all at the same time. And then I go underneath the sink, I use my hand as a perfect moisture meter and um, I look for water marks. I rub the bottom of the trap and I rub the bottom of the valve and I look for water marks. If it's leaking, great, take a picture of it. Move the cabinet, test the GFCI, look at the light, the fan exhaust. I move the, I try to move the, the toilet with the side of my foot, my side of my leg. If it wobbles, I take a picture of it. Look at the interior of the tub and the, the shower and the shower flow and the, and the fixtures itself and the drain. And I push on the floor with my foot on the corners where the tub corners meet the floor. I do the same thing in every bathroom. It takes maybe two minutes to do a bathroom inspection, including writing the report and taking pictures. 
Interior, representative number. Representative number of windows, representative number of doors, representative number of wall receptacles and the switches and things like that. You're not required to inspect everything. There's the other bathroom. Same process, same pictures. If there's a plumbing access panel that's openable, um, it's not painted shut, I'll open it. And I did this one, it looks great. Just going through, taking pictures of every room, representative number, taking a look at the handrail, going downstairs, half bath, very easy. There's the fireplace, remember that chimney on the, on the outside? Creosote uh, is a fire hazard. I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna put a recommendation in the report for a cleaning uh, by a chimney sweep. Looking at the firewalls, looks okay. Manufacturing label, it's a factory built fireplace. Moving on. Watch your sooty hands after a fireplace. Interior looks good. Interior key deadbolts make an emergency exit difficult. It's a hazard, so that should be switched out. Garage. Um, there are 10 steps to inspect an opener that's attached to a vehicle garage door. Um, those 10 steps are in our training courses for a garage inspection, and it's also in your um, software, right? You're gonna just take that checklist and put it in your software device as a inspection process. Um, open and close the door using normal operating controls, the laser eyes, no more than six inches above the floor. Here's a firewall compromise. There should be drywall all around the garage that's attached to the house, and there shouldn't be any openings through which a fire can move. Inspect the kitchen. Kitchen's maybe 10 minutes. 15. Hot and cold water at the sink. Check for leaks. Turn on the garbage disposal. GFCI protection all over the place. Make sure the island is securely attached to the floor. It should have a GFCI. Turn on dishwasher short cycle while we finish up. The stove and the oven. Don't let go of the oven handle. Turn the oven off. Don't let it sit there and run. Um, and then there's a, a vent. And then you do a summary with the client, which is about mm, a few minutes. 5, 10, 15 minutes. If they're with you, it's really short. And you can go over the entire report. And my entire report looks like this. Oh, I, I sweep a credit card and get paid. Make sure everything's signed. Everybody has every copy. Everyone's been sent a summary in the inspection report. It's all done. I get paid. And everyone has a receipt electronically sent to them. And everything's good. And the report looks like this. So first few pages, table of contents. I add what really matters in a home inspection, a little introduction, and then the systems. Um, the systems in the report are, this, uh, are the same systems that I inspected in the same order. So it's kind of like a nice flow. So when my client is reading the inspection report, the first thing they read is what I inspected first, the roof. And I th try to throw pictures in there as much as possible. And I do system and then components of the system with pictures in between and my comments, which I just, with my software, I just click a button and click with your finger and select the sentence that you constantly say over and over again with every inspection report. Sometimes there's something customized and takes a few seconds. I don't write, actually. I'm terrible on with my thumbs. So a lot of the software has a voice command, uh, voice control and you can just talk your sentence, speak your sentence into the software. And there's the pictures. This is the actual report I gave my, my client. It's really nice, nice pictures. Everyone loves pictures and video. And recommendations are red, like every recommendation is. So monitoring is red, right? And improvement and repair is recommended. Those are in red. Let's see if we have a correction and further evaluation that's in red I like red there's the attic there's the bathrooms there's the kitchen and interior and at the end you can have illustrations really nice illustrations to spice up your inspection report um, 3d illustrations and high-def illustrations 
and you can get all those illustrations from InterNACHI's gallery. We have an inspection gallery of uh, images and illustrations you can download and upload into your report. Uh, I'll leave you with NACHI TV, N-A-C-H-I dot TV. We have a lot of classes coming up. Feel free to register for the classes and I'll send you a link to the video recording. You can watch them later. And NACHI.org slash everything is that one main page, that 15 step checklist to success. And um, if there's anything anyone needs, we're on the contact page and that's at NACHI.org, NACHI.org slash contact. Now, while you're here at the five day class, make sure you talk to somebody. Take advantage of meeting with the education team, the marketing team, um, inspector outlet. Um, you can talk to me um, and be sure to uh, ask a lot of questions of your instructors who are certified professional inspectors and certified master inspectors, and they run home inspection businesses. So um, we're really good with the instructors. You need to learn a lot from them while you're here. And um, that's about it. So thanks everybody for coming. Have a fantastic five day class becoming a certified home inspector at InterNACHI headquarters and the InterNACHI House of Horrors. Bye.